bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy, His mercy is pure. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you are a child, this is your lucky day. You get to go to Children's Chapel with Maggie and company. The first reading is from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springeth forth. Do you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. We'll read Psalm 126 together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The epistle is the Philippians 3. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, 
as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, for, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, you, Lord Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this because he cared about, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. 
You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord.
that's not enough. You can get busy. You always have the poor with you. This is a closer of this short vignette. It almost steals the thunder of the story. It's Jesus' stopover in Bethany, which is really just a bedroom community outside of Jerusalem. I don't know whether they commuted back in the day, but if they did, that's where they lived. For a better view, less crowds. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does steal the thunder of the message when it's said and provides convenient line to arrest our unease about this scandal of poverty. And as with most things, this line is better expressed in context. The backstory is this Lazarus, remember, has been raised from the dead. That's the big elephant in this room. Lazarus is actually there. Not laid out there, but alive. Maybe he's still kind of stinking from being dead. It said, you know, when he came out, he stinked. I love that. You may have heard me preach on So, Lazarus has two sisters, Mary and Martha, and we, we know kind of their shtick because Martha's the busy one and Mary's the contemplative one. If we look at them, we can sort of side with one or the other, but the real fact is they were both of them at different times. But Mary and Martha are supposedly serving out a feast. That's what happened then. The women served and the men ate. Well, it just is what it was. Uh, but somewhere in the middle of this, Mary, the contemplative, dreamy one, cracks open the nard. You know nard. Right? Pure nard, not just the cheap stuff, but pure nard, which is actually a fragrant oil made of swooshed up herbs and preserved, and it was used to anoint the dead, covered the stench of rotting flesh in an era without embalming or refrigeration. Having some nard around was a good thing. There are plenty of lesser quality oils, but the Lazarus family clearly has some, some resources. So this pound of nard that Mary slathers on Jesus' tired and dirty feet, it must have been left over from some nard she had to anoint Lazarus. Kind of a sweet-smelling cologne that stayed with him. Talks about the smell wafting through the place. And if I had another sermon, I'd talk about my desire for smell vision. <laughs> we'll do that another day. Of course, John the Gospel is really all about symbol and metaphor in his storytelling. So Mary is foreshadowing Jesus' death, anointing him before he takes on Jerusalem, highlighting that sacrifice that he is, is to be made. And, and Jesus himself says she is anointing. Meanwhile, but Judas is grumbling at his end of the table. A pound of nard is worth an average year's wages. Go figure. Surely it could have been sold and the money could have been used to help the poor. But of course, John, the storyteller, throws some shade on Judas, saying he was skimming from the communal bank account, so his sentiment is tainted at best. Whatever they hand over to give to the poor, he's taking the fat commission. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me, Jesus says. Still, we also wonder if, even if Judas is a scoundrel, he does have a point. How do we spend our communal resources? You always have the poor with you. Jesus knows that not even 300 denarii will fix the problem. But the statement is not what it appears. If we take it by itself, apart from all of this teaching about money and people with money, over and over, Jesus speaks of abundance in God's kingdom and we act out scarcity. We worry about not having enough, not being enough in Jesus' name. You are enough. There is enough. There's plenty. There's more than enough. So when people get money, they tend to see it as a limited resource, which it is for us. And while it may be so for them and us, the irony is that folks who 
who have more are conscious of how much they have and more worried about losing it and protecting it. Clearly, a billion is not enough if you're a striving, scrapping billionaire. In God's economy, there's plenty. In this world, it's not that there's not enough food. It's that it's unevenly distributed. There are too few resources for there are not too few resources for God. There is a lack of imagination, of faith, of generosity on our part. Our nation spends more than half of all we have collectively on what we call defense. Defending what we have. And it's not even idealistic to say that this isn't needed, but it's still kind of a shocking figure and scandalous that humanity itself, not just us, is so short of our potential to wage peace that that is what it's come to. You always have the poor with you. Maybe Jesus says this because poverty is a sign of opportunity to remind us to care for one another, to participate in God's love. Celebrate God's abundance. Maybe Jesus says this because poverty is not just about money. It's fallible of humans to experience a poverty of hope, of imagination, of generosity, of peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self control. We come out poor on it, but it's not over. This is not the will of God the absolute and utter and stark statement of our need for God to rearrange our wills, our imaginations, and our priorities. We always say, follow the money. Follow the money. We'll see what we love. True, we may not give away all we have and go all ascetic on the world. The hair shirt is no better than the software. True, we can't blow up the world's economic systems, rearrange the distribution of wealth, or enforce some ethic of enoughness. You have one, you're one of the one percenters, so you have enough. You can't do that. The world may be as it is because humans are inherently sinful and selfish. What we learn in Lent. But that doesn't have to be because of us. Just because something is did not, does not mean that God wills it that way. We have agency, we have ability, we have influence. And there's joy to leverage and that for love. You always have the poor with you. You always have the poor with you. Because we don't always Jesus with us. We take it back. You always have the poor with you. I'm glad Jesus said it. Because it's the truth. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may not be life. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for Carol Collins and her family, Gary Stump, Peg Moncure, Candace Sammons, Mike and Ethel Pugh, Al Bennington, Lloyd Rapp, Candace Moore, Brenda, Lisa, Ruth and George Bryant, Betty Taylor, Dan and Shirley Holler, Rosemary Atkinson, Maggie, Henry Hopeman, Karn Mott, Emily G, Doris Savage, Sarah Reynolds, Carolyn, Joe Kopp, and Diane Hughes. And for those in military service, August Bolt, Austin, James Badgett, Thomas Garcia, Jake Hillary, Patrick Hillary, Isaiah Urardo, Juan Manera, Catherine Manera, Austin Nicholson, Luke, Scoob, Luke Scrooby, and Paul Stoneburner. We pray for Christ Church Glen Allen, St. Francis Great Falls, St. John's Centerville, Trinity Manassas, and for our mission partner, the Senior Center. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Bruce Whitcomb, and Annabelle Catterall. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. God, you made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus Christ, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts, break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your will on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved you. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have had mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your love and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. known as JT. I'm glad to see you. If you're new, if you're coming back, if you've been around, or if you're, you're just here yesterday, glad to have you. So, Cal Dagner, Hoggy, Finn, Ren, Olive, thank you for coming to the work day yesterday, and all the grown-ups who got to watch. <laughs> There are some pictures of me working. That's the only work I did. But uh, anyway, grateful for that day. And uh, certainly, Augie and Finn made sure that the trees were climbable here. And it was amazing. There's some great photographs. And thank you for everybody who did the work. Carolyn, who helped corral this. Brad, who's back there, who helped corral this. There were lots of hands. And people kind of came and went all day. But it worked out great. And if you notice, our grounds are looking, looking good until, of course, the next big windstorm and everything will be chaotic. And uh, Claire Watson, I guess uh, Monday night you'll be at our contemplative prayer meeting here that will last several hours. Uh, she's a North Carolina fan, and they won the basketball Final Four opportunity to beat up on Kansas. So have fun with that. My, my bracket actually is absolutely last in two separate, two separate uh, sort of family setups. Don't look to me to make predictions. Lots going on. I, I draw your attention to the announcements. There's lots, lots to do to plug in as we kind of emerge. And uh, there's a heck decorating party today. I do want to draw your attention to um, on Friday evening at 7 o'clock, we're invited to join with our neighbors of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church next door, St. Nicholas. I had a nice visit with their pastor and, and, um, and have continued to stay in touch with them. They're, they're going to have a, a, an opportunity to pray for Ukraine and also an information kind of session about how they're connected. So if you would like to do that, uh, join us in the parish hall for supper beforehand. It just seems wrong to sort of do something at seven and not have something to eat beforehand. So we'll get some pizza if you want to let us know you're going to be there and tell us your uh, preference for pizza and no, Janice Fisher, Emmanuel people shan't put pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Unless, of course, y'all order it. Any other announcements that I need to know about? Brad? I want to remind everybody that the deadline for signing up for the uh, Red Cross CPR first aid and AED training is coming up. The actual training is on Saturday, April 23rd, and sometime this week is the last day to sign up. And you can use Sign Up Genius to do that. Uh, they need a head count ahead of time so they can determine how many instructors to send. They have a certain number of instructors per uh, student. So uh, please sign up for that. It would be very useful. And you will be certified for two years after you take the course. Critical. Thank you, Brad, our junior warden, who's the energizer bunny of Emanuel Church these days. Uh, yes, that's, uh, and it also comes to you free for nothing because uh, it's being backstopped. But normally that would be a little harder to do and it would cost you some money. So we're hoping that we can get as many folks as will come for that training. Um, seems like there was something else on my brain. I can't remember what it is. Oh, well. 
Birthdays and anniversaries. Do we have any of those? What? Hell here. Okay. It's not my first time turning 30. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> Lovely and talented Elvira Hiley will turn 39 once again. <laughs> Anybody else? Anniversary? All right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Bestselling book. 
So welcome, John and Nancy and others. Glad to have you here. We, we have a festive coffee hour already for you. Uh, Mary Buford did red, made stuff, and then uh, now she's doing coffee hour too. So. Sings in the choir. She's kind of covered all her bases today. Yeah. Way to go. All right. Let us give thanks for everything we
Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Finally, my friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of the God who made us, who loves us, and travels with us always, be with you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.